I mean, how bad could it be? Hey everyone, Axel with you again to share some early game solo PvP tips in Ark Survival Evolved. These tips will include leveling, base location and design, items to carry with you, starter tames, taming tips, activities to carry out in your downtime, and how to maximize your productivity as a solo player. So first on our list we have leveling. The easiest way to do this is to cheese the game and go for a note run. If you're unsure what a note run is or the path to take, there are a lot of videos on YouTube that show very detailed routes on a variety of maps within ARC. Most of them much better than the one you're seeing at the moment. These notes or dossiers grant 100 XP each and will also allow you a double XP boost for every piece of XP you gain. This XP boost can be utilized in a big way by crafting cloth armor. I recommend the pieces of armor that only require fiber because you can gather a lot of fiber and craft the armor while on the go doing your note run. This should see you reach level 70 pretty quickly and because of this massive boost in levels you can customize your engrams which will depend on the type of player you are, the motor server you're on, as well as the tames you're going for. I'll sit quietly by while this note run takes place so those of you who want to copy can do so. So in regards to this section here, I wasn't originally going to put in a note run, but I felt as though the guide wouldn't be complete without it. Um, in regards to location, just make sure you spawn in at West Zone 2 on the island for this particular pathway. And um, I've done my best with the map to give you guys a generalized idea, like a generalized idea as to where each uh, dossier slash note is. With the note run coming to an end, let us look at base building and location. So firstly, after your note run, you'll have 200 cloth hats and lots of berries to munch on, but probably nothing much else. 
So let's take a look at the ideal place to build your first base. You will ideally want a place that's out of the way. Don't build too close to high-end resources as they're not your priority right now and they're high traffic areas. So they'll be attracting a lot of attention and the last thing you want is to be bowled when caught off guard. You'll also be needing a place with lots of trees or cliffs to hide your base away as well as give your teams coverage. Any attention from other players while you're in the early game is bad attention. As for base design, I have plenty of build tutorials on my channel which you're welcome to replicate. You just need to decide on how big you want to go but be careful about going too big as this can blow your cover so be wary. So you're level 70, you have a base location and are in the process of making the base. So now let's delve into what items you'll want with you at all times. This is dependent on whether you're PvP or PvE, but let's look at the PvP aspect because PvE is fairly self-explanatory. You'll always want bowlers and parachutes in your hotbar. Your biggest issues in early game are small, fast carnivores and other players, all of which can be immobilized with a bowler. Another item will include a ranged weapon, most likely a bow, with some arrows in the early game. The further away the distance between you and the teeth that want to tear you apart, the better. This usually goes hand in hand with the bowlers. You'll also want parachutes, as these will help you avoid fall damage. Sometimes you might get picked off your level 30 pteranodon and get dropped from a very large height. So parachutes can help save your life long enough for you to bowler your attacker and use your trusty bow. Lastly, the other items you will need is cooked meat. Berries can do alright for short term, but a handful of cooked meat can also heal you, as long as your food bar is not full, as well as stim berries to help combat any torpor inflicted by other players or wild creatures. So, what's next then on our list? Alright, so now we move on to starter tames with some taming tips added to the list. So first and foremost, the berry gatherer. Now this can really be any creature that can gather berries, as they're all better than humans at doing so. But this depends on your map and the location. The easiest tame will normally be a parasaur, albeit it's not the best creature in really any regard. But it'll do to get you started. Then you'll need a flyer. Grab a PT, as this will give you access to more resources and is usually the fastest flying tame on the island. Then, as you have access to more resources, your production will increase. As your production increases, you'll need more resources on top of that. So after your PT and Parasaur, make some Trank Arrows to down your first RG. Just go for a low level to begin with, as it'll knock out faster and won't take as long to tame. The RG should be next on your list, as it has an awesome carry weight, even at low levels, and it'll help you transport the resources you collect. This is further helped by the fact that it has weight reduction for quite a few resources including metal, crystal and obsidian. When the RG is down, let it starve out for 20 minutes before putting any food in its inventory as this will allow it to eat immediately as soon as you return to it with prime meat. So in the 20 minutes that you're waiting for it to starve, I recommend going and being productive, leveling up your Pteranodon and pumping more stamina into it as any other trait or stat in your Pteranodon probably won't be worth it, but stamina normally is pretty good. So once the 20 minutes has passed, yeah, go to the edges of the swamp and keep an eye out for the titanoboas. These are the most fragile creatures that give prime meat. So once you've killed enough snakes and retrieved about 10 pieces of prime, go back to your RG, which you should be able to track through the UI system and feed it the prime meat as well as a stack of regular raw meat just in case the prime meat wasn't enough. This is the point where you can split off into different directions after that. So you can go for an Anki, or a Dodic, or a Beaver. Personally, I go for the Beaver next, as my forges need to run constantly for that charcoal production. And while the charcoal is being produced, I use the RG for metal runs, and the RG's weight reduction, as I aforementioned, it makes it very easy to transport decent amounts of metal. But regardless of which tames you go for, there's a few that won't tame without the assistance of narcotic substances. So the most effective way to know what animal requires what kind of narcotic is completely dependent on how fast its torpor drops in terms of percentage. So Therese, Quetzals, Beavers, Thylers, Moses, Plessies and Giggers Anyone who's downed one of these will know the struggles of trying to keep them knocked out while you go and search for the kibble or the meat or the vegetables to tame them. 
their torpor drops very rapidly and thus this reduces the amount of time that they're knocked out for. The best counter for this is not narcotics or even biotoxin, it's narco berries and I'll explain why. Five narco berries are needed to create one narcotic, we all know this, but did you know that one narcotic will increase the torpor by a certain amount for only eight seconds? So that's eight seconds of stalling that very rapid torpor drop. Whereas one narco berry will increase torpor for three seconds. So mathematically, the five berries you use to make your one narcotic could have stopped that fast torpor drain for 15 seconds. Almost double the amount of time that that singular narcotic provides. So if you're going to tame a creature and you know its torpor drops rapidly, use more narco berries as opposed to narcotics because you can gather them in bulk and normally right where you've downed that creature. So you don't really have to do anything else. There is no further crafting in order to use the narco berries. So now let's talk about some activities that you can do to maximize any downtime you have. So there's a variety of things you can do and the first and most obvious is a metal run. Grab your new RG, take three metal picks just in case, you know, a couple break and make your way to the nearest mountain or hill. There's also cementing paste farming, which is my personal favorite because it also gives you a secondary resource in bulk that no one ever utilizes and it means you don't have to worry about farming it. And that's wood. So gathering hundreds of wood in a singular beaver dam, you just park your RG close, open the dam's inventory, take all and swiftly remount your RG and fly away. Not only did you get your cementing paste and other assorted goods, but the amount of wood you most likely collected will save you, you know, quite a long time in farming trees, as well as saving you resources on needing to repair your hatchet. So when you take all the wood with you into the beaver dams, be sure to have enough storage for it in your base because your forges are going to be running for a very long time and they'll be providing you with all the charcoal that you could need, especially for the early game, potentially even mid game if you are fairly consistent with the beaver dam rating. There's also meat running. So meat running isn't really for the meat itself, but rather for the spoiled meat that it turns into. Just slam all the stacks you collect with your RG into a storage box and let it ferment while you can collect other resources. And then lastly, there's stone and flint farming, as these are the ingredients needed for spark powder. You'll be able to power your preserving bin and also combine the spark powder with charcoal to make gunpowder. This will be paramount if you wish to raid you know, stone or lesser tier structures later on. And if you can somehow brave the snow, then oil nodes can also be harvested. If you require oil, but don't have the ability to go into the snow, then I recommend killing tech creatures for their oil, electronics and scrap metal. Uh, don't forget that certain maps have more resources than others. So if you're okay with transferring maps, head over to Ragnarok for obscene amounts of cementing paste. Uh, aberration for more metal than you could ever imagine and crystal isles for well crystal just remember to take your rg and saddles with you and always carry as much as um, your rg will allow otherwise the trip may not be worth it and the final activity is loot crate farming those big beams of light in the sky can give massive payoffs and because you did the note run at the beginning when you first spawned in you can farm all the way up to the red loot crates, which normally house the higher end tier items. And our last item on the list is maximizing productivity and efficiency. So the basic premise of this is very simple and it's very crucial for solo players. Many bases that I've seen that I've um, come across and they've been raided, a lot of them only have one smithy, one forge, one mortar and pestle, one storage box, etc. If you wish to maximize your productivity, increase the amount of crafting stations that you have within your base. Take note that this can depend on the size of your tribe though. So solo players, maybe not quite so much, but you know, up to five, six players and having the bigger base locations, you will definitely be wanting more crafting stations. Just as an example, three mortar and pestles. So you have one for narcotic production, another one for spark powder creation, and another for gunpowder or two or three forges to help triple your charcoal production but i must stress do not use campfires especially at night as the light emitted from them is horrendous and can easily give away your position if you're trying to be discreet two smithies to create different items or perhaps to create the same item simultane uh, simultaneously 
So this will double your production of whatever it is you're creating. Uh, just as an example, maybe a simple rifle ammo. Multiple water tanks on a singular pipeline to help maximize your water capacity and large crop plots stacked on top of each other to minimize the used up space for greenhouses but also to reduce the resources um, needed to actually make the greenhouse itself. I'm sure there are plenty of other tips involved in the early game of PvP but these are simply the first and foremost that I can think of. So I hope this video has helped you guys out. If it has, feel free to drop a like and I'll see you folks in the next video.